I'm Colin Harris from Nowhere, continuing the series on hooking up SAS in Excel. This is the fifth technique that we're covering in this series, and what we're covering in this one is using ODS, Excel, XP, Tag Set. As you can see, uh, there's a range of 11 different techniques, and the other techniques are covered in a set different videos than this. This one is purely focusing on the ODS, Excel, XP, Tag Set. What is the ODS XL XP tag set. ODS is for the output delivery system, part of SAS that controls the output. Uh, and what, even if you don't know about the output delivery system and don't use it explicitly, it's used automatically under the covers to direct output and control the output to wherever it's going, whether it's writing it to an HTML file or it's writing it to a PDF file or it's writing it to the output window within Display Manager or within Enterprise Guide. So that's what ODS stands for, Output Delivery System. This particular technique, uh, the Excel XP tag set, is specifically being created at SAS to write out format, file format that is very good to be used within Excel. In fact, that's why it's called Excel XP. It actually creates XML. Funnily enough, you may think, well, it should be creating an XLS formatted file, but no, it's actually creating XML, but Excel knows how to deal with XML, and when you open up the file, it knows, oh, this is XML, and displays the information uh, in the, the appropriate way for you. This tag set has been developed over many years, and the team at SAS have been developing it very regularly, lots of updates all the time as they, they take customer feedback and, and put new updates out very, very often. So that's why I say my next point there is to um, make sure you've got the latest tag set from the SAS website. Uh, you may have the ability to update the, the tag set within your SAS environment, or you may need to ask someone who administers your SAS environment to update that. It's stabilised a bit over the last couple of years, so you may find that you have the latest one anyway, but it's worthwhile just checking. What type of technique is this? It's a push technique from SAS. So SAS is in control, pushing out the information into the file, which then Excel opens up and, and accesses later on. What type of transfer is it? It's output that is being transferred. It's not taking a SAS table across into Excel, but it's taking the result of various procedures. It could be a prop tabulate or a prop print or data step output, but that resulting output has moved across into Excel. What's it good for? It's very powerful for controlling the formatting of that resulting Excel spreadsheet. So if you're wanting something that, that looks nice, that's got different fonts and formats and got filters on it and a whole range of other things, it has got a load of options to allow you to control that formatting. It allows you to use the SAS styles as well. It handles multi-sheets, which is something a number of the other techniques don't handle, so that's a very good advantage of this technique as well. And it's creating a brand new Excel uh, format, sorry, a, a file, creating a new file or overwriting an existing file, not an XLS format, but XML format, but it's creating that new file rather than updating an existing spreadsheet. Let's look at the code. Here we are, first statement here is closing off any existing output, so we don't want it to go to the default destination. We want to control the output to go off to the Excel SP, XP destination, that's how you tell it there, and we tell it which file we want it to go to. So here we're creating a file called xlxpsimple.xls. Note we're creating it with a .xls name, even though we know this is an XML file we're creating, we're creating it as an XLS name, then Excel knows to open it up in Excel, and it will determine then it's an XML format and, and handle it appropriately. So the same simple code as we've used in the previous series, we put a title on here, we put a prop print to print, just do a simple print and get that resulting output. At the end there, down the bottom, we close off the XLXP destination because we want to free up that file and then say for any remaining SAS code it will go to the ODS listing which is the default output location. So there we go, we open up that spreadsheet and we see it's quite a nice result. Without putting many statements in at all we can see it's quite nice to actually look at rather than some of the earlier techniques where it's just very simple plain data that's moved across. 
So that's without us doing anything at all. Let's now tidy that up a bit and making it a nicer looking output again. So this is an example where we use some of the other options to make a much fancier output. Let's have a look at what we've got here. The bones are still the same. We see how we've got our ODS tag sets XLXP, writing to the file, using the Barrett's Blue style, but this options code is now different. There's a whole raft of things we can do, so this is just a couple of simple examples. First one is embedded titles equals yes. You may have noticed on the previous Excel spreadsheet that the title hadn't come through. That's the default. We can overwrite that and say, yes please, we want the title on that. The next one down, the print header. This is controlling the print header part of the Excel spreadsheet, where when you print an Excel spreadsheet, what other things do you want there? This is simply saying where we want to say page 1 of 10 or whatever. It allows us to put that in. The next one down is saying we want the format, the, sorry, the footnotes. And the last one here, auto filter. Often people want Excel spreadsheets with the filters on the column, and that's what we're doing here. We're telling it to put filters on the columns 3, 4, and 5. Further down, we're now saying we're creating the sheet name Europe. So this has multi-sheet support. So this is the, saying create the first sheet and call it Europe. So we put the title, European Cars, we've got a footnote there, and on to the next page where we have a few options, additional options within Prop Print as well. The first part's very simple, Prop Print, we're just pulling out those European cars, so that's subsetting out the information that we wish. The variables, make, model, etc., that's a list of some variables we're printing without any options on. But then for the uh, maximum recommended retail price, we're changing some of the way that that gets displayed. What we can do here is change the actual header. The header is, of course, the, uh, the name of the variable at the top of the column. And we're telling it there to change the background color to yellow, change the font to Times New Roman, and justify it in the center of that column. Similarly, we can do the similar thing with the actual data within the column. I'm going to make that background green. Again, the same font and justified. And that's what we'll look for in the resulting output. We'll run that and have a look at the result. And you'll see we've got now the title is shown. We've got our filters on the columns here, these three columns that we described. And we've got this column not looking very pretty, I must say, but showing you how we can change it and make it stand out. Remember, we changed the background to yellow for the header, and we changed the data to green. So that gives you an example of how you can control the resulting Excel spreadsheet. So what's the advantages here of this approach? Loads of options, as I say there. I've just shown you a couple of simple examples. Go and look up the documentation on the Excel XP uh, tag set, and you'll find loads and loads of different options to allow you to do that. What that means is it's very flexible. You can get all sorts of different um, Excel spreadsheets created. Another thing it's good for is generating lots of spreadsheets. Why do I say that? Well, some of the earlier techniques that we saw where you point and click through and create a, a specific spreadsheet at that time, if you wanted to create a thousand spreadsheets for a thousand different branches, that means you would need to go and click through and create a thousand different spreadsheets. Click, click, click. Each one's pretty fast, but a thousand times it takes a long time to do that. Whereas this is all code generated, you could wrap a macro around the ODS tag sets that you're creating and just change the macro variables and create a thousand spreadsheets very simply indeed. So it flows into the next one really. No need for manual formatting. Some of the later techniques we'll look at is if you wish to create a nice spreadsheet, you can go into that and manually change the actual Excel spreadsheet to change your fonts and colors, etc. But if you had a thousand spreadsheets, that's a lot of manual changes you would need to do. Again, it ties up with the automation and good for generating lots of spreadsheets. This can run on any SAS platform. So you could be running mainframe SAS or running on a Unix environment. And even though people think, hang on, you're not you're not dealing with Excel on those environments, well you actually are. SAS can generate those Excel formatted spreadsheets for you, files that are created by this Excel XP format, and it can be created on anything that runs SAS. Of course the resulting file you need to put into a place where Excel can see it, which is typically Windows, um, but uh, you can create it on any of those platforms. Another very good thing with this technique is you do not need any additional products. This, all this capability is provided just as part of base SAS. 
Right, what's the downside to this technique? Well, XML has been created, so it's not native XLS, and that limits to some of the things you can do. If it's in uh, an XLS formatted spreadsheet, you can do some more things with it. Because it's Microsoft XML, Microsoft Excel does read in and, and decode the XML quite happily, but what it doesn't allow you to do is support images. So remember, that's one of the advantages is of the MS Office 2K tag set, but this particular Excel XP tag set does not support images. Something you've got to watch is dates coming, for, coming through in text format, and therefore the dates are not handled properly. So that's something you need to be careful of. Uh, and how you deal with that, the best way to deal with that is refer to one of the reference papers that uh, I talk about, we talk about on the, uh, or show you on our SAS on the Nowhere website, and that is a whole paper that just talks about different formats and how you have to deal with them coming through to Excel. So I definitely recommend getting hold of that and having a read there. Okay, what do you need for this particular technique? As I've said earlier, it is just base SAS that's required, so it's one of the advantages. So PC file formats isn't needed. Of course you need the Excel XP tag set, but that is not an additional product. That comes as part of the base SAS, but it's nice to check the version you have of that and get the, the updated version, so you're working off the latest one. Also worthwhile, or need to point out, that this works only for Excel 2002 onwards. That is the, the version of, or these are the versions that, that use XML appropriately. Earlier versions will not work with the Excel XP tag set. Thanks for watching this video, which is part of a series on hooking up SAS in Excel. The full PowerPoint presentation is available at nowhere.co.nz, which includes references to good papers that provide more details.